afternoon and welcome to Chinese Mandarin 0489. These can expect when they walk into an 0489 class, totally unprepared to teach. Let's take a look. <laughs> First up will be Airman First Class Steve Vanderkloot with his impersonation of Bao Lao Shir. Fun. Mm 
Huang Shenshan. Need a anyway, Johnny Lisa. Sure, sat on anyway, ma. Ah. Han Shenshan. How? He's wash, ma. Chan no, your pronunciation sucks. But fudge way. You say write down, write down your pencil, your pen. Fudge way. No, 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 no. Fudge way. 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 Fudge Wang. I tell you, I tell you. Fudge Wang. You reserve? <laughs> yes, I'm reserve. Another glorious day in class. For you guys, I got this great characters. Anybody know what this means? Anyone? Uh, synthetic Anyone? testosterone. <laughs> right. Are there any questions about this? Anyone? Yeah, hello, hello, sir. I got a question. Any, what are the characters for uh, rectal thermometer? Look at it yourself, dickhead. <laughs> no, seriously, it's the same thing. <laughs> hey, hello, sir. Can I take that makeup test today? Well, I don't think so, because I got. <laughs> More important things to do today. Uh, Good afternoon, ladies and germs. I'm Staff Sergeant Shecky, and you're not. <laughs> but seriously, I'm here to introduce you to one of the Army's most prestigious and most successful training academies. That's right, the NCO Humor Academy. Here at our headquarters in Dubuque, Iowa, NCOs receive seven weeks and a brunch of rigorous training in humor essentials from the great comedy masters like Henny Youngman, Jackie Mason, Soupy Sales and Rip Taylor. Start the bubble machine. <laughs> Here at the Academy, student NCOs receive many hours of instruction to correct flaws in content, delivery, and timing. The first hour of instruction includes bad humor deprogramming. Here's an example of a classroom situation. And my mom said, I swallowed it. <laughs> <laughs> Good one? Yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> try it, Clued. Let me give you a little hand. <laughs> I slept with this chick last night, and she had more chins than a Chinese telephone directory. <laughs> In addition to 
poor timing, bad joke content, and predictability, you as an NCO, who must set an example, should always remember to laugh at your own jokes. Okay guys, I got a joke. What's black and white and 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 white and black 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 and black and white and black and white and black and white and black and blue. What? A nun falling down a long flight of stairs. Well, it's been a long seven weeks and a brunch, a grueling time. It's been hell, but it's graduation day, and these fine NCOs walk away with a sense of pride and a feeling of being really funny. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. As a parting token, they receive the coveted Bozo badge. You're beautiful, babes. Don't change. <laughs> <laughs> We're here at the Chinese Mandarin 0489 DLPT. Chinese student, one hung low, is scrupulously going over each answer on the test to make sure he chooses just the right one. Here's yet another Chinese student taking the DLPT. Let's check on his progress. Oh, Han seems to have given up. He's Christmas tree the entire exam. Well, it looks like he's about finished here. <laughs> Let's see whose strategy paid off. Hey, one on the What'd you get? Look what I got. A two plus. Outstanding, dude. <laughs> Uh, hey, what? What's the problem? Hey, come on, guy. Hey, <laughs> knock it off. Hey, dude, it's not that big deal. It's not in the reserves, dude. <laughs> hey, come on, man. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that big. He chose poorly. <laughs> you have chosen wisely. He was all out here grading the latest batch of tests. Lesson number 113. Oh! Hey, what's wrong, man? You don't know, man? You don't know? We haven't been keeping up on current events, but we just got our asses kicked, pal.
semi-successful Chinese student. And the next day, nothing. Out of class, nowhere to go, no more friends. They make me stay in this room all the time. I never get to leave. But I guess it's okay. I mean, I have my bottle. And, uh, oh yeah, on Sundays they let me go and do my laundry. And, uh, could be worse. I mean, once in a while someone walks past the window. That's not so bad. I just wish, just, just once, just one time, I could go back to that Chinese class again see all my favorite teachers. Chu Tai Tai, Mr. Powers, Wong, and Wu, and, 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 uh, what's his name? You know, he talks real slow, a California guy. You know. God, I can never remember this. Oh, uh, glasses, you know, can never find them. Always smoking cigarettes. Used to give me those horseshit grades all the time. You know the guy, the one that, the one that was, you know, Always in that back room, always, like he was trapped there. And I know, I know, he took it out on us, always. God, if I could just remember his name. For the next two months, the street was closed to through traffic this morning. Um, desert from the Odell Ranch. Today, students now walk on land once reserved for alfalfa, but a second crop is still there from the 1950s, and everyone at COD benefits from it. Steve Price has a story. State funding, lottery funds, and fundraisers. For colleges across California, that's the way to cover the budget. But at College of the Desert, officials are making money from a fourth source, their date trees. We rent out our trees to a local grower, and he takes care of all the maintaining of the trees. We provide the water, and then when they harvest the date crop, we get income back from the, the date crop. COD runs on a $20 million budget. The 660 fruit trees bring the college about $15,000. Now, that may seem like a drop in the bucket, but administrators say every little bit helps. It does seem small, but it does, it helps out especially with our grounds and our maintenance areas where we need everything we can get just to keep the campus in um, good looking order. For students, the trees are more than just a money machine. Not only do they help the college blend in with the community, but they're also a good conversation piece. I really enjoy the shade, it cools you off and um, I think they're really pretty and my daughters and I when we come on campus, we look at the dates, and it generates a topic of discussion and another learning tool that I can use with them. It gives people an idea about the culture of Coachella Valley and, and what kind of resources the valley has, but they need more fruit trees growing on campus, something that I can pick and eat, and I don't have to go pay three bucks for an orange inside the cafeteria. In Palm Desert, Steve Price, KMIR-TV News. At least there's one college where every student can get a date. <laughs> Sorry, that's pretty that's bad. Right. Pretty bad. I've seen them being around. Meantime, at the stadium tonight, Dodgers send Mike Morgan to the mound to take on Daryl Kyle.